Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I'm going to show you seven non-traditional ways to use your dies for card making. This is part of the Friendship Card Hop organized by Courtney Krieber. I hope that you will hop along with us. There are a ton of great designers and some really fun and fantastic cards, so lots of great inspiration. If you're new to my channel, feel free to click subscribe and let's go ahead and get started. The first technique I want to talk about is making shaped cards. So you can do this with pretty much any die. You're going to cut a pair of, of the same shape. In this case, I've just cut a pair of tags. And then I'm going to line them up. Well, actually, only the bottom one is going to get lined up in my score pal. If you're going to use two different types of cardstock, make sure that the one that you want to be the back of the card gets lined up here. And then you'll score a little flange at the top there. So I anywhere between a quarter of an inch and half an inch, depending on how thick your cardstock is and how big the die is. I tend to use about three eighths as a good rule of thumb there. So I scored that line and then I added glue just to that top little flap there. And then I lined the second uh, die up and layered it on top. And then I'll just go ahead and make sure that it's nice and flat. I do prefer wet glue because it gives you plenty of time to wiggle around if you need to. And it's a nice secure hold. If you prefer tape runners, feel free. Obviously this video would be no fun if I didn't show you finished cards. So I did just go ahead off camera and add a couple dies to that and some ink blending to finish up that card quick and easy. Now I want to show you another way of making a shaped card. This time instead of starting with two identical dies, we're going to start with three and we're going to turn it into an easel card. So I'm going to take the piece that is my center piece and I am going to score another flange. In this case, my die is big. So I've got a five and a half inch circle and I scored a half an inch from what is the top. Whatever your top piece is going to be is going to be lined up on the left side of your score pal or right, however. However uh, you use it, I'm left-handed so I, I line it up on the left. But then you're going to take the difference, so the remaining part and divide that in half so that when you fold it up you're going to have those those two large pieces are the same width. Um, in this case because it's a five and a half inch circle I made it easy. I scored it um, one half inch and three inches. That gives me two flaps in the center that are both um, two and a half inches wide. And then that, that half inch flange at the top. So you just go ahead and glue the, the little flap there to the back part. And then we're gonna attach the front part by adding glue just to the, um, the bottom half of the center layer there. So you can see I'm, I'm just gonna make sure that I get glue all over there. And then that way I know that I don't go above the fold line. And then I'll layer the top layer on top. And then you can see that we'll have an easel card. It's gonna be kind of a weird Z fold, but that hinge now allows the top layer to pop up and, and go forward. And all you need to finish off this card is obviously to decorate it, but on the inside you want something that sticks up a little bit that can catch the top layer and hold it upright. So before we finish that card, let's talk about the next technique. We're going to turn shapes into something else. So this card was actually inspired by a funny little pizza sentiment that I have, and I didn't have any good like pizza stamps or dies. So I went rummaging through my dies to see what I could find that would look like pizza toppings. And you might be surprised by some of the things that I came up with. Um, for instance, my cheese pieces or curtain tiebacks. Um, and you can see in white, they don't necessarily look like that. But I want you to look through your dies, turn them sideways, think about them cut in different colors, and see what you can see. Um, the threes look like they could be bell peppers. And the C's, I went ahead and I, I added some inking to the inside of the C's and turned them into mushrooms. Obviously red circles could be pepperoni. So just take a look through your stash and see what you've got. They don't have to be perfect. What you're looking for is to get the point across. So even if it's a little bit off, people will still get it and it'll, it'll still be fun. Um, those spooky eyes, I thought, cut out of black paper made perfect black olives. <laughs> um, and again, who would have thought curtain tiebacks would be cheese? But I just cut a bunch out of different colors of yellow paper and layered them up, and then all of a sudden I had pizza. 
So I went ahead and glued that all together off camera so that you could see it. And then now let's go ahead and finish up that easel card. So I'm gonna glue the pizza to the top layer. And I could have actually created the pizza on the top layer of that easel card. There's no reason not to, other than I was just doing it separately. Um, and then I've got my two sentiments that are already embossed and cut out. And here's that funny little uh, pizza sentiment from that rabbit hole designs, anti-sassy, anti-valentine. I don't know what it's called. Sassy anti-valentine. <laughs> it's a funny set. I really like it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and pop it in place with some foam tape. And then my sentiment inside says happy Galentine's Day. And again, I'm going to pop it up with foam tape. That way it will catch the bottom of the pizza when you open the card up. That allows it to stay popped up and you can have it sitting out on the desk or on display. Now let's look at another uh, card that I made doing basically the same thing. I'm turning two hearts into Swiss cheese, <laughs> which is probably not what you would normally do with hearts, right? But um, I needed some Swiss cheese. So I cut two hearts. Um, one is from a light pale yellow. The second one is from a darker yellow. The darker piece will go in the back and that will add a little bit of shading. And then I just grab my circle dies and I'm gonna kind of cut them out randomly from the top piece. And I'll just go ahead and move them around back and forth. And I'm making sure to go off the edge. It's fine if they overlap. In fact, it looks better if they do. Once I cut out the bigger circles, I'm going to come back in with my quarter inch punch and my eighth inch punch. And I'm just going to add a few more circles because I, I really want to, I really want to sell the cheese. <laughs> so I want to really make sure that it does look like Swiss cheese. And it's, it's just a fun little element. And now the heart on the top is basically unrecognizable as a heart, but when you layer it up, it looks great. And I did go ahead and cut a piece of foam to match that. And then I tucked in some little mice to finish up this card. I think it's really cute and super simple to do. You could do that with star. You could do it with a, any shape that you wanted. So the next technique I want to talk about is creating a mini scene. It's easier to create a scene on, say, a die cut heart or a star or any shape that you want to create a scene on than it is to create a scene on a whole big card front. And I just want to show you the parts here. I've gone ahead and cut them and colored them off screen, but I'll, I'll show you. Um, I cut two hearts and I trimmed one of them down with a grass border. And then I've cut a bunch of love bugs in these little... Uh, floral pieces. Those are all from iCrafter. Uh, the grass is from Lawn Fawn, but the rest of the dies for this card are from iCrafter. And then I'm just going to layer them up and fill up the heart to make a scene. And I did go ahead and color these. I, I like to color die cuts, but you can cut them from whatever color cardstock that you want. You can add a little shading if you want to, or you can just make them all solid colors if you like. But I think this is a fun, cute little scene. And again, I didn't have to create a whole big scene on a whole card front. I just popped it up on there and then I added a sentiment from another iCrafter set to finish up this card. So our next technique is embossing uh, backgrounds. We're going to use our dies to, to dry emboss. And I've got a piece of green pearlized cardstock here. And then I've got my squishy pad for my die cutting machine and I'm gonna make my sandwich. Now, whatever machine that you have, you'll probably wanna experiment a little bit. Dies are thicker than some of the other embossing plates, so you'll wanna experiment with your shims um, or your tabs, depending on what machine you have. But basically, you wanna sandwich the paper between the cut side of your die and your squishy pad. And then my machine actually, uh, or my squishy pad came with a special plate to go on it. And then for my machine, I did take it all the way down, no tabs on, on the bottom plate there when I ran it through. Um, but again, experiment with your machine to, to make sure you get the right pressure to emboss and not actually punch through. But it's beautiful, and this was so fast and easy. And then I just trimmed it up, added a sentiment, and finished up this card. You can make a whole set of these in almost no time flat. Add a couple gems or sequins, and, and you've got a beautiful card really fast. Um, that sentiment is from an iCrafter set as well. 
let's talk about creating your own stencils. This is another great way to use some of your border dies or actually whatever dies you have. You can cut some stars out, make a starry background. Um, I don't have a, a cloud border and I don't have a grassy border um, stencil. So I make my own because I do have this awesome Concord and Ninth cloud die and I have this fun grass die from Lawn Fawn and I can just go ahead and cut those out of strips of cardstock. You can use copy paper even. I do like the, the lighter weight cardstock to cut stencils out of because it's less likely to have ink bleed through. So uh, I prefer to use thin cardstock. And I also like to cut them long. So you see me moving the dies over and cutting a second time. Um, I'm doing that because that way I can get some variation when I'm stenciling. I, I don't want the cloud, the big bump on the cloud to be in the same exact place every time. I want to shift it over from left to right to get a little bit of variation. And when you cut them out, if they don't exactly line up, just use your scissors to connect the dots. Nobody's going to notice. Um, but you do want a clean cut edge rather than a torn edge because it'll show up crisper in your um, stenciling and it'll look more uniform with the rest of the die. Okay, so I'm going to show you real quick why I saved both the top and the bottom of the grass there. Um, and again, these strips, I didn't cut them out of very wide pieces. Um, I do like to use tape for them. And this is a wide masking tape. It's kind of sticky, so I am taking the tack down a little bit just by rubbing it on my shirt a few times. And then you might be wondering why I'm putting blue in my grass. What I'm actually doing is masking. That's the reason I kept both sides of the grass here, is I put the grass down and then I put a little bit of blue above it so that I can have blue in the horizon there. And then now I'm going to take the other half of that stencil and I'm again going to take down the tackiness on this tape so it doesn't tear my paper when I pull it up. I will line it up and then I can remove the first part and then now I can come in with my green and stencil the grass. So this is going to act as a mask for the blue sky that I just stenciled. And it will protect, um, protect the line there. Now I can come back in, add some more layers of grass. And obviously this is not a stenciling video, so I'm not going to make you watch me do all of it. Um, but I did stencil in my clouds there too. Um, one quick tip with clouds. Use a much lighter hand than you think you're going to need to, otherwise your sky will look really stormy. <laughs> it only takes a little bit. I promise you it shows up. Okay, so before I finish this card, I want to show you another technique. We're going to do partial die cutting to create a different kind of easel card. So this is going to be an easel card made out of all one piece. I have gone ahead and I have this adorable little caffeinated dragon from the rabbit hole designs. I've stamped him and I cut him out and colored him with my Copic markers. Um, obviously that's the traditional way of using a coordinating die, but this is where we do things a little bit differently. I'm gonna take that die and line it up on the background that we just stenciled. And then what I wanna do is measure up about halfway between the um, fold line for the card, the, the top fold, and the bottom of the card. So I'm measuring two and three quarters of an inch because this is just a standard A2 card. So two and three quarters of an inch up from the bottom and then I put my top plate on top of it and when I run it through my big shot the only thing that cuts is the top half of that die. And you might be wondering why I did this but I'll show you. So now I bring in my score pal again and I'm going to measure up that two and three quarters of an inch again and I'm going to score just on either side of the die. So where the where the die stops cutting um, to the left and to the right, I'm going to create a fold line. So his head is not going to fold down, but the rest of the card will fold down. You see that? And you can use your bone folder to help get a nice crease there. And now we can glue that uh, dragon to the front there and finish up this card. You can see he'll become an easel this way. And then the last thing that you need to do is again make a little bump something that will stop the front of the card. So I used one of the same gems that I decorated the rest of the card with. Incidentally I used a couple more um, sentiment stamps also from the rabbit hole designs. I thought they were cute little tea terrific and I turned his coffee mug into a cup of tea. Um, so you just put the little stopper on it and that finishes up that card.
Okay, so the last technique I want to show you is creating a window using your coordinating dies. Actually, again, you can use any die, but um, in this case, I'm going to use my dragon again here. And I've got him lined up in my Misty. I've got an A2 panel of white cardstock there. And I'm just going to go ahead and stamp him down. And then I can pull that panel out and I can color that. I want this panel to be inside my card. So it's important that I leave the, the dragon inside my Misty um, so that for the next step here. So I've gone ahead and I've colored him off camera. And you can see I'm going to want him to sit inside the card. But I want to cut a window so that you'll see through the front to the colored image inside. So that's why I had to leave the, the stamp in the Misty. Now I've got this A2 card front. I'm going to put it in the Misty and then I'm going to stamp it. This does not have to be perfect stamping. Don't worry. The main reason you're stamping it here is just so that you can see where to line up the die. So now I'm going to grab that die and I will line it up and then I can tape it down and then I can open a window into the inside of the card here. So it's important that you do open your card before you die cut it. Otherwise you will cut the window all the way through both layers and that's probably not what you want. But then I've gone ahead and I've cut him out and now you can see we've got a window so that when I put him inside he lines up just right. But I don't want those white edges to show. So now I'm going to trim it. If I had trimmed it before, uh, before I stamped it, then he may not have lined up exactly right. So I left that panel A2 sized. My card is A2 sized. And then now I can trim it down. And again, I just trimmed about an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then I can glue him inside and finish up the card. I found a fun little sentiment. Again, this is from Rabbit Hole Designs. And I put it on the front, and then I added some flat back gems to finish it off. I think it turned out pretty cute. So let's take a second and just review all seven of these techniques real quick. The first thing that I showed you was how to create shaped cards. Two layers will give you a standard card. A third layer can give you an easel card. Uh, we turn shapes into something else. So I pulled out a bunch of random pieces to make cheese and to make pizza toppings there. Then we created a mini scene. Um, this is much faster and easier than creating a whole scene on a big card front. And then we went ahead and dry embossed the background. Those cherry blossoms are beautiful and that was super fast and easy. The next technique was creating our own stencils. And then we also did a partial die cut to turn this card into an easel as well. And then the last technique that we talked about was creating a window using your coordinating dies. So we use that die again just to cut a window there. He's a lot of fun. I hope that I have inspired you to look at your dies in a new way. Try to stretch those supplies. I mean, we spend a lot of money on our supplies, so it's a, always a bonus when you can make them work extra hard for you. I hope that you will continue along the friendship card hop with us today. There are some awesome cards and some great designers to hop along and see. If you're new to my channel, feel free to click the subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the bell and you'll see when I post new videos. And then after you hop along with us, feel free to come back and check out some more videos. As always, my friend, thanks for watching.